Hello, my Ozark friends, and welcome to Ozark's History. This is Vincent Anderson. Here at Ozark's History, uh, we're kind of known for doing history back in the Ozarks anywhere from 70 to 100, 150, 200 years ago. But today we're going to focus on something that's a little more recent, about 38 years ago here in Oakland, Arkansas. Now, I'm on Highway 202, uh, about eight miles from Oakland or so. But the compound and the place that we're actually going to talk about today is called the CSA. Now, the CSA stands for the Covenant, the Sword, and the Arm of the Lord. Now, the Covenant, Sword, Arm of the Lord started in a, as a small little Baptist church, basically in a resort near Pontiac, Missouri. And they kind of grew in numbers and drew, grew in strength. And then finally, they moved off and they went down to Oakland, Arkansas, right across the state line. They moved their church and confines across the state line in northeastern Marion County near Oakland, Arkansas, and they had a 224-acre wooded area that turned into basically a fortress in the hills of the Ozarks. Now, this wooded patch in the Ozarks started out as a place of refuge to hear God's voice, but it ended up being a compound that was rumored to have landmines, weapons, and they were ended up actually harboring fugitives from the law. Now, within the area where I lived here in the Ozarks, they began to be viewed, the CSA, with a kind of a suspicious eye. They were also being targeted to be a suspicious organization by the FBI and the ATF, law enforcement in Marion County, Arkansas, Baxter County, Arkansas, and Ozark County, Missouri. Uh, those three counties, because they were just in the nexus where all these counties joined together. Now, there was a standoff began basically because of uh, Jim Ellison and the harboring of uh, fugitives and also the rumor of a lot of weapons. A standoff began April 19th, 1985, and negotiations began working with the CSA elder, theologian, and spokesperson, uh, Kerry Noble. Now, besides negotiations, there were also press conferences, newspaper interviews, TV interviews that were being conducted here in the Ozarks. Now, there is one broadcast, a TV broadcast, that really has captured my uh, thought process, and it's it just caught my whole attention. Uh, it's with Mountain Home's small TV station at the time in the mid-'80s. It's called TV 43, and they had a reporter that was working with them. Her name was Susan Ketchum. Now, Susan did an excellent job in an interview that lasted almost an hour. Now, there are parts of that interview that are on the Internet with a little over 12 minutes of viewing time that I have found but I've never found the whole uh, interview in completion. Now, Susan's husband at that time, Bob Ketchum, was the cameraman recording the interview. Now, Bob collected so many interviews and he collected all those into an archive. He donated his digital archives to the Baxter County Library uh, before he passed away. Now, within those archives is the TV 43 CSA interview that Susan Ketchum did. Now, Ozark's history has worked to transcribe the whole interview in its entirety. Uh, now, I believe closed caption is so important because, number one, the audio and video quality that you're going to see on the video is not the most perfect. It's from 1985. I mean, there's, it's not what we have today. Uh, we've endeavored to pull out every word possible in this interview. And yes, for those who are hearing impaired, like myself, the interview is in closed caption. Now, for those who study indoctrination and delivering a propaganda in such a cool manner, I'm going to say Carrie Noble, who Susan Ketchum is interviewing, is at the top of his game. Oh my goodness, he is so good delivering this propaganda. Additionally, I believe the closed captions can help study history not only for yesterday, for today, but also in the future. Therefore, we have transcribed, like I said, everything in its entirety also up to 150 languages in closed caption. If you do not have closed caption, look down at the bottom of YouTube and you'll see CC to view the whole script. Go with your mouse and click on CC and you can see the whole interview on the script. Now, I will say as a historian who has viewed this video at least 30 times while transcribing it in the last three months, I have watched it with true devotion. Um, it, it's an amazing video. 
to understand what the indoctrination process was there at the CSA. I ask you to hold your condemnation and your judgment until you know the whole story. We're not gonna do the full documentary here, but I just wanna say something about Kerry Noble. Now, Kerry Noble, once in prison, became a reformed man, and after his repentance and conversion from white supremacy, he wrote two books. The links of those books are at the bottom of this video if you wanna see those books. For those who want to severely judge all the people who live there at the CSA compound, I'm gonna ask that you have grace in your heart to consider the women and the children who live there that were caught in the undertow and actually survived that whole ordeal. They are the innocent ones. They are the victims. And I ask you to continue to pray for those who were in that whole ordeal. This introduction will be separate from the interview. The interview, I want to keep the interview in its historical context and entirety. Uh, I am not gonna make any comments on the comments below, neither will anybody else be allowed to do that. The comments on the interview are not allowed. This interview is reserved in time for 1985 in Ozarks history. For Ozarks history, this is Vincent Anderson. Thank you very much. Video will be linked below. Have a great day.